Uh, my talk today will be there's a quick hazard in the East African Rift and uh, rapid response strategies. Uh, the content of my talk will be very brief. Uh, first, background in, in general, which will contain seismicity of the East African Rift system and uh, recent seismological activities, uh, capacity building efforts in the region, in the East African Rift and rapid response uh, communities. So if I may start with the first background, uh, since Grigori in 1896 designated it as the Great Rift Valley, the East African Rift System has got great attention by earth scientists. Uh, on the mode of deformation, there are different theories and hypotheses uh, but uh, the one recently accepted, uh, which seems to be plausible, is magma assisted drifting, uh, especially by back 2006. The stress, dif stress difference needed to get uh, extensional separation of two lithospheric blocks, uh, A is without, which uh, requires a lot of stress, and B is with magmatic intrusion, which requires less stress. So that's the one which seems to be working. Uh, in the East African Rift system, the magma assisted drifting in general. Uh, this <clears throat> map shows the first seismicity of map of the East African Rift system from macro seismic observation, which was compiled by uh, um, Seberg and Krenkel uh, as reported by missionaries in Africa. You know, So this is a kind of strong motion record. So the, the whites, well, the white background is simply rare or unknown, nor the quick. The one next to that, <clears throat> a bit darker, uh, is, shows uh, moderately frequent, not violent. Then the next stage is frequent, occasionally destructive. And uh, the, the most darker ones are the world shaking shocks. So uh, this shed in general, or strong motion data matches with the current seismicity of the East African Rift. Uh, we can say, but uh, this is just a human used as sensors, which is really interesting. Then uh, before a widespread recording was made uh, by some stations installed in uh, Africa, most of the earthquakes were captured by other stations deployed elsewhere, mainly in Europe, uh, and also in Far East, like in Japan uh, um, and in China, perhaps, I think. So for instance, this is a 2006 uh, magnitude 6.0 quick uh, recorded in Uppsala by Wichert instrument. And uh, this was the, the first instrumentally recorded maximum magnitude as the quick sourced from, from Ethiopia. Uh, in general, the mode of deformation in the East African Rift system is extensional, as shown by Global Cement Solutions, uh, World Plan Solutions shown, shown in this map. Uh, but in the Congo Basin, uh, there are some uh, consistent uh, trust faulting also shown by uh, these events, uh, which is a published work also by a year in 2002. Otherwise, here in this area, you may find strike slip event uh, or uh, thrust faults uh, along the East African Rift. We can't rule out, but uh, statistically that's insignificant. Uh, in the East African Rift in general, uh, earthquake depth increases uh, when we go from the Afar region down to the Kavango Delta. Magnitude also increases likewise, uh, but magmatism decreases also in that direction. This is uh, the, the one uh, by Craig Eta. 2011. Uh, from to tomographic work also, the upper region uh, is uh, known to have a very uh, huge anomalous, uh, anomaly in the shear splitting. I mean, so shear uh, uh, values, I mean, uh, uh, because of the huge molten intrusion there. So if you see from Hogar to the through the Afar, we, we go this cross section. Uh, that's W1, E2, which is this one. Still, Afar remains to be the most uh, melt dominated region. 
and also along this traffic and drift system uh, that the S1 to N2. Uh, so uh, it's really an interesting region when it comes to uh, seismic activity or magmatism. This is a <clears throat> seismic system map of Africa where the red dots uh, are from the NEC catalog, but the, the yellow ones are from some temporary uh, short-lived uh, networks. Uh, so if we deploy more and more stations, we always find uh, uh, seismic activities along the East African drift in general. So it's very difficult to say some regions are seismic. So in the last couple of decades, there were a lot of activities, uh, mostly dominated by magnetism. Uh, Niaragongo 2002, uh, Dabahu in 2005, Machez 2006, 7.0, which is really damaging very quick. And uh, Natron 2007, also the uh, deck intrusion and volcanic eruption. Uh, this is Karonga uh, 2009, actually the event occurred in 2009. This one is also in the Gulf of Aden region, submarine. And, uh, Nabru 2011 and uh, uh, Jabal Zubair also in the Red Sea. So in general, if we just consider this African drift, the last 20 years, uh, there are some net civil and uh, very interesting notable activities going on. When we come to Ethiopia, uh, the Western Plateau is just infested by swarms of dikes like Acosta, which can be as old as 30 MA, and uh, somewhere in Bati, about 7 MA, and then it migrates that way and the current um, active volcanism is going on in the rift axis, uh, like the 2009 eruption, which is connected with the Dabahu activity. And uh, when we go into more details, uh, again, in the last nearly 20 years, uh, uh, the, the most notable deformations uh, somehow related with magmatism, May 2000 in, uh, uh, one area, Dabahu 2005, Aludalafila, again, the Gulf of Aden, uh, Navro, uh, Jabal Zubair, you know, th these are the kind of activities. And the, uh, the 2005 megadec intrusion is the, the, the most outstanding and more significant in terms of magnitude and also remain for uh, uh, quite some time from 2005 to 2014, I guess. Uh, as it was also published by Wright et al. So when we come to Sub-Saharan Africa or East African Rift uh, proper, we may not know, notice that, but uh, very damaging as the quick 6.8 and above. These red, red dots that you see here are very significant in damaging as the quick 6.8 and above. But in the past, um, uh, when there was no technology and the urbanization, the little Tukulu houses can stand comfortably. Uh, but now we are aspiring to go for uh, uh, multi story, more uh, sophisticated multi story buildings. The chance of those kind of earthquakes to occur is still uh, the same. I mean, nature will continue the way it was, but uh, the urbanization is increasing and uh, the, the degree of damage. And the risk certainly will be terrible in the near future at some point, it's a matter of time. So uh, as the saying goes, earthquakes do not kill people, but buildings do. So uh, as, as long as we build this kind of buildings, more and more damage on property and also uh, cost of life will be huge in the East African rich countries. Uh, some decision makers, some people in Africa, even people in the science or ordinary people do not really think that there will be damaging earthquake. But if we mention some of them, this is, for instance, the Sardo 1969 earthquake that completely destroyed the small uh, Sardo village. And that was 6.3 magnitude. And uh, this one is a Karonga 2009, 6.2. And uh, there was no much days, but uh, uh, a lot of houses were destroyed. This one is a Kagira 2016 in uh, Tanzania, uh, Western Tanzania, 5.9, uh, 16 people died. Uh, so uh, really significant damages are there, really, honestly speaking. 
So capacity building efforts now, how are we capable of monitoring every activity in the East African Rift? Not really, because it's not the same capacity that exists in every country. The activity in the natural process is very interesting in exotic science, but there's no really uh, credible capacity in every country. So one of the India versus the Africa Ray, uh, it has been there for quite some time. And they honestly, they trained a lot of people uh, and the capacity was built, but now it's kind of subsiding. There was a lot of uh, publication in the deeper the studies, but on the local <coughs> bulletin production and uh, seismic hazard like thing, which remains for the member countries is not really uh, as it should be. And uh, the other one is also the Eastern and Southern Africa Regional Seismological Working Group since 1993 and sponsored by the International Science Program of Uppsala University. So once in a while, nine countries from Eritrea down to Mozambique, we used to convene in uh, one country and compile catalogs. So this is, for instance, one example where you can see um, some interesting, uh, which might be in contrast with what I see International Seismological Center can get, quite a dense uh, uh, activity in uh, the Tanzanian Karatuan area and in Jafar and also down there might be uh, the mine dominated events, but uh, it's really interesting. So once in a while we come together and compile this kind of activities. And this was a workshop held in Eritrea and uh, in one of the field excursions uh, is just a, a group of uh, uh, pictures shot out there. Um, recently, uh, when it comes to rapid response, again, uh, because of the lack of capacity, we are not really prepared for rapid response. If we know something has occurred, somewhere uh, because of the logistics and the field cost, vehicles and all the likes, uh, we, we get let and uh, we miss the event in most cases. This is uh, one of the helicopters recorded by uh, Mbarara station in Uganda, but uh, in our real time system here in Addis, in our observatory. So we were following up what's going on in Nyaragungu before the eruption and after as well. Uh, so this is a kind of thing that we need to have uh, as many places as possible in the East African countries. So even, uh, uh, you know, for prediction or for early warning and uh, monitoring of that kind is really very important, but nearly non-existent in many sub-Saharan countries. Uh, um, this kind of facility, you know, real-time data beaming and uh, rapid response organized uh, in, in an organized fashion. So as a conclusive remark, uh, earthquake and volcanic risk is on the rise in, the, uh, in Africa due to, not because the activity is increasing, but uh, increasing population and development activity and uh, low awareness by government and society. So this needs coordinated efforts of the regional scientists and uh, uh, governments and uh, overseas researchers. So, and also the other challenge is also, you know, when we build capacity in the region, the build capacity is not sustainable. Uh, I mean, by African governments, maybe salary is not enough. So the, simply the, the, the built capacity will, uh, will die away uh, slowly. So the ch challenges and opportunities, there is uh, an opportunity of building research and monitoring capacity of earthquakes and volcanic activities by collaborating with overseas researchers, as we do here. But the challenge is how to maintain the build capacity as it was commented earlier, uh, as the attention of governments are episodic, like the natural events and the communications are also one way. Government authorities, you know, they, they knock your door and they get you down there when they want to. But if you want some help and assistance from the decision makers, they will not let you in. So that's a big gap. In general, our daily life uh, over occupies us, which deters us from fulfilling our professional duties that will eventually uh, motivate also brain drain. So I think with that, I, uh, I, I put my message quite well, uh, and that's all I can say, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Atale. There's time for a few questions. Do you have one yes. type in the chat or just a small question mark and we get the word? 
Uh, Kathy Whaler has a question. Can you ask it yourself? I, if that's okay, yes, I will do. Um, Atelier, very nice talk. Thank you very much. Um, I believe you've done some work on building codes for the Ethiopian government. Can you say a little about that? Um, yes, uh, Kathy. Uh, I think uh, the I think what's such I showed us uh, as the introductory slide. Uh, we have generated uh, the census because of the map and uh, using that as an input and other engineering uh, parameters. The third generation of uh, build code is in place, but uh, I think that's not really enforced on the construction industry uh, with all the limitations as well. You know, that's only catalog based um, hazard map, uh, which uh, uh, doesn't use, you know, the ground motion prediction equations side effect and there are a lot of limitations but even then um, it's only few enterprises and a few private um, uh, companies and some government organizations it's not really enforced by by decree uh, just to endorse their uh, design and the like they use it but we are not yet there uh, otherwise the third generation building code is uh, already uh, adopted by the Ministry of Urban Development. It, it is there. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would have another question um, from uh, from Megathras at subduction zones. Uh, one can um, define these seismic gaps, and I was interested whether something like a seismic gap, whether that's actually possible to define in normal flood networks. Things are much less recurrent and much less is known for the seismic cycle. But are you aware that there are some uh, effort being done to isolating areas that have a higher risk of failure soon than other areas? Um, uh, you know, I, as I tried to comment earlier, um, the East African Rift or areas in that region, uh, the monitoring is not really uh, consistent. I mean, if it is magnitude five, uh, five and above, uh, perhaps uh, the international data centers like NIC or uh, the German network or uh, the IDC international data center and many others can capture it. But the uniformity of the catalog or the obser observation is not consistent. So it's very difficult really uh, with this non-uniformity in the space and time uh, to, uh, to, to pinpoint that kind of gap. Uh, but in uh, Subduction regions in uh, other areas. I mean, in, in the Far East, uh, you know, the, it's amazing. I mean, you can't see the map of Japan because it's covered uh, with several monitoring facilities for uh, several decades. So, in that case, you can't really uh, uh, scrutinize if there is any gap or not. But in the African context, it's really hard, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Uh, we, we are running out of time, but Sarah uh, has a really good question. So I would like to ask her to, to speak up just for a moment. Sure. Um, Atale, I was wondering if you are interested in a reinvigorated Africa array program that focuses on open access, real-time data streams and hazard assessment tools, plus data science education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I we have already... Uh, 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 agreed or endorsed uh, collaborating with Africa Ray because uh, the outcome of Africa Ray was, was really very consistent. I mean, uh, uh, th that was huge impact, in fact. But as I tried to explain earlier, when it comes to catalog, you know, the whole waveform was being archived. And uh, most of the students were focusing on deeper the studies like receiver function, tomography, and the likes. But uh, uh, you know, scrutinizing or scanning through the whole possible shocks recorded by that network was not really done uh, correctly. And uh, rapid response also can be handled by the kind of uh, organizations, I mean, uh, working groups like Africa Ray and the training also. Uh, Africa Ray, I think they uh, even, uh, you know, on how to run in troubleshoot stations, you know. Uh, before the Africa Ray regular annual meeting starts, uh, they always 
used to give this kind of training. So I think I, I, I would be happy if Africa really restrengthens uh, securing funds and also moves on. There is a huge gap in Africa. So I think Africa really should continue, honestly speaking. So I'll be happy to participate. Thank you.